Hi, I'm your host, Kelly Jo, and this is the Nourished Motherhood Podcast, a show dedicated to bringing together the voices of motherhood and helping women connect with others and themselves through the power of sharing honest, vulnerable stories. Because every woman deserves to have a place where her voice is heard. We believe that supporting mothers is one of the healthiest things we can do for our society. There's a balance of beauty and grit to be found in every woman's story. And we're so honored you're here to listen, connect, and grow with us. Let's dive in. Hello, and welcome to the Nourished Motherhood Podcast. I'm your host, Kelly Jo, and today you're going to be hearing from me as I share a little bit more about my own journey with you, specifically how I'm doing in this current pregnancy. I was recently asked how my current pregnancy is different from our daughter's in the wake of pregnancy loss. I know that's a little bit of a heavy topic, and we're going to talk about it. I promise it's hopeful, but just take note. If if you're walking through this and this is triggering, you might want to skip on, but I it also might be insightful knowing you're not alone. At least for me, I know it's been so helpful for, to hear from other women who've walked a similar path. So that's it. what we're going to talk about is this question recently had. So at the time of recording this podcast, I'm 36 weeks pregnant, closer to 37, and I'm living in my maternity nightgown because this just might be the most comfortable thing I have ever owned. And we are also in the midst of launching this podcast and this community. So man, like the last three and a half months have been a wild ride. And honestly, they have just flown by for me because we've been in such a deep state of creation. So it's kind of actually hard for me to believe that we are on the home stretch of this pregnancy. And I am looking just so forward to welcoming our son into this world in just a little under a month now, huh? Or whenever he decides to come, because let's be honest, it is very rare that little ones actually come on their due date. Um, So while this isn't necessarily the easiest thing to talk about, I think it's super important to share all the many different faces of pregnancy loss and also pregnancy after loss. Um, And before I dive into this pregnancy and the differences, I just want to take a couple minutes and share with you what our last few pregnancies have looked like, specifically my daughter's pregnancy, um, because In many ways, our current pregnancy was shaped by hers, and we're doing a lot of the same. But in order to understand maybe some of the differences we're experiencing after experiencing or after walking through loss, I think it's just important to start there. So first, with my daughter, like if we if I think back to my pregnancy with her, I really knew that I wanted to work with a midwife, which isn't really that surprising. Like if you listened to the last episode and you heard some of my story, I shared that I was previously on a track for becoming a midwife. So it seemed pretty natural for me that I actually wanted to work with a midwife. And therefore I received all my prenatal care with our midwives at the birthing center. And then I think a second major thing that contributed to or like shaped how I approached our pregnancy with my daughter and even now was I had already been on a huge, really huge healing and health journey. And so I, I approached my pregnancy in a more holistic and natural way and perspective. And so I knew that my choices while our baby was in utero was just, there was a direct impact between my choices and like my daughter's health, both like in the short term and her long term well being. So that really impacted everything I ate, how I moved my body, the types of products we had in our home, and even how I managed stress. And so having that integrative approach definitely impacted like who I brought together for my support team. And so obviously we had midwives. I went and saw a chiropractor on a regular basis. And I really believe those things made such a difference in my overall birth. And I have to also just say this, that like, my first pregnancy was like a super wild ride. And I think thinking back to that like first pregnancy, like it, at the same time while I was working with a midwife, I had this really great holistic approach. It was also this wild ride and it was definitely overwhelming in that like everything, it was all so new and, you know, just trying to wade through all the things and like all the little decisions you have to make and you want the best for your baby. Like it was, it was nothing short of overwhelming. 
And I definitely think like in this current pregnancy, I'm reaping the investment of in that whole learning curve my first pregnancy was. So in some ways, like I, I actually consider this pregnancy a lot less overwhelming and less stressful because well, I've been pregnant before and I know what to expect. And then I think another important thing before I really dive into like this current pregnancy is like, I'm one of those people that I just, I love being pregnant. And, you know, I know that that's not the case for a lot of women. And that's not to say like pregnancy is like a breeze. It's actually, it's quite the opposite. It's a lot of work, but it's work that my body is innately and intuitively designed and wired to do. And so I just, I have really, with my daughter, I mean, my dad would say, I've never seen someone enjoy pregnancy as much as like you do. And it's so true. Like, I really think that was true then. And I have really enjoyed this pregnancy. And I've also had a lot of differences in this pregnancy after having experienced loss. So I feel like that's just motherhood in general is there's this duality of holding some really rough stuff maybe, and then like all this beauty. And it's sometimes a fine line and sometimes you're holding all these things all at once. And so anyways, I just like say that because I love being pregnant. Like it's just, there's something magical about creating and birthing new life. And I think it's similar to the reason why I have such a love for creative outlets and like entrepreneurship. So yeah, even in the midst of morning sickness, grief, like all the discomforts that come with pregnancy, somehow I still just really like being pregnant. And I just really count that as a huge blessing. So now that I've kind of shared that, I feel like those are some of the main things when I think back to my pregnancy with Ruby is I kind of went this more natural route working with midwives. I was already on a health journey and like very intentional around some of my lifestyle decisions. And I really enjoyed being pregnant. I so, And I think those are like foundational for where I'm at today. So let's talk a little bit about our loss. We miscarried back in April 2020. And I was very early. I was only six weeks along. But let me tell you, even though I was only six weeks along, that little bean, that like sweet little baby, he had already lit up my entire world all over again. We were so thrilled to like have another baby. and. I had made arrangements to interview a midwife. We were living, we had moved from Alaska, from our hometown um, to Nashville, Tennessee. Shout out to all my Tennessean friends. Oh my gosh, you guys are amazing and I miss you. But I was just so giddy to be back in the stage and to be finding a new midwife. And, you know, as soon as you get that positive pregnancy test, you are envisioning a life with this child. And For some, it like takes a while to swallow, right? Like sometimes it's a surprise. Sometimes it's like not welcomed, but you start imagining life differently. And so I was no different. So where we had waited with our daughter to share the news of our pregnancy with her until probably like 12 or 13 weeks, we we started telling people right away. And it was just about the time we started sharing and not like not two days later, I started to birth that baby, but way too early. That was about the same time, no later than we had told. I think we had told two or three family members that I went to the bathroom and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I'm miscarrying. And that was the worst feeling. It's I, I still don't even have words to describe that event and that that experience. And so Instead of showing up for our interview with our midwife and to establish care, she was walking us through the heartbreak of losing a child. And instead of sharing joyous news with our friends and our family, it was tough. Like we had to share our loss. And, you know, I've never revered life, human life, as much as I have since losing that sweet little one of ours. I'm not going to go too much more into our loss in this episode than that, but it it profoundly impacted me and it took me a long time to get to the point where I felt like I was even open to getting pregnant again. I had like gone into a pretty dark spot and maybe on the outside people didn't know, but it thought of having a kid again was just, it was dark. It was scary. And I wasn't sure I would ever get there, 
But, you know, God really met me in those dark days in some pretty deep and profound ways. And that desire to love, to mother, somehow it, it's, it welled up again and it, it yet again created a space for us to try and to consider trying, even though I was scared. So we did. We started to try again. And thankfully, even though I've battled like hormone imbalances for years, I was told I'd have like a really hard time getting pregnant. Like that really isn't something my husband and I, we've had to struggle with. And it's something I don't take lightly because I know so many women listening in are walking a really long road of fertility challenges and heartache and miscarriages or recurrent miscarriage. And, you know, I just being able to like get pregnant right away. It was basically as soon as we decided, okay, I think I'm open. I think I've processed and I've healed enough like to try for another kiddo. Like we were pregnant and like that, um, that really, that's a gift. And so I I really recognize that and I don't share that lightly, but that leads me to where I'm at today because we are super close to giving birth to a tiny baby boy And actually like a lanky little boy based on the ultrasounds. It's been a wild ride like these last nine months. And so, yeah, I guess let's dive into some of that. I knew right away at this pregnancy, like before I even got that positive pregnancy test, I knew I was pregnant. It was like my body was screaming, hello, I've done this before. And so, y'all, I must have like peed on a stick five times or more. I'm not even kidding before I got that positive test. And so pretty much as soon as we got that test, yeah, we started to share with people. And that was something like really different that we didn't do with my daughter. But I knew that we were going to walk through loss again or if we experienced loss again, that I was going to need additional support this round. And like I also wanted to create space for like that more celebration of life to happen um, because that's something I really feel like I missed out on with our second pregnancy. And so just really wanted to to celebrate that. So we, you know, as soon as we got pregnant, I started sharing, but you know what? Like it, it definitely came with a lot of excitement, but also a lot of like trepidation. And so, you know, one thing that has been really different about this pregnancy is, you know, for probably the first four or five months of this pregnancy, like every time I went to the bathroom, there was Like I checked for blood, like I checked the toilet, I checked the tissue, like it wasn't even something I like consciously was doing all the time, but like subconsciously, like I just seemed to like naturally check. So there was like this, even if I didn't recognize it, like there was this underlying like additional level of stress, anxiety, and yeah, and something I was just unsure of. And then what also didn't help is early on in my pregnancy, about around the five week mark or so, I woke up in the middle of the night in horrendous pain. And I woke my husband up. I was like crying, which that's pretty rare for me. And I I was just like, you got to take me to the ER. Like, I think I'm having appendicitis. And so, you know, it was all the right spots. I've had enough health training and like um, emergency wilderness responding stuff that just like something is wrong with me. And like, it's really rare for me to be in pain like that. And then like to cry about it, to wake my husband up. So we drove the 45 minutes or whatever hour to the hospital and took me to the ER. And, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm pregnant. What's going to happen? And I already had those fears going into my pregnancy. And so after, you know, doing some ultrasounds, some tests, the ER docs were like, dude, there's nothing wrong with your appendix, but you've likely had an ectopic pregnancy and need surgery or like to take these meds. The care, it was awful. Like the bedside manners, I can't even begin to describe to you like how terrible that was. And like, I was all alone. Thank you to COVID-19 restrictions. And so I was trying to process that, okay, I don't have an appendicitis. They don't know what's going on, but they're sure that my pregnancy, that it wasn't going to last. And so not only that, but I had to really hardcore advocate for myself, which is something we talk a lot about in this community is the need to be able to like have people who can advocate on your behalf, learn how to advocate for yourself because so often in our system, there's just not always for one reason or another, the highest regard for women, for mothers, 
these doctors wanted to give me medicines like intravenously without my consent, without even telling me what they were. I had to like really work hard to figure out, hey, like, what is this? What are you trying to do? And then even more so, like they wanted to move forward with addressing my problems and concerns likely as an atopic pregnancy. And so that that was really scary. And so for those of you listening and who don't know what that is, an atopic pregnancy is when your fertilized egg, it doesn't implant in your uterus. And so usually this can happen like in the fallopian tubes and often this ends in a pregnancy loss or in in miscarriage. And so you can imagine after having walked through loss and I'm all alone, (laughs) it's like the middle of the night and I'm just waiting. And so like for 12 long hours, like I waited there wondering if our pregnancy, if it was going to continue on and what the status of the life was in in my womb. And, And so for 12 hours, I waited until I got that second opinion and could be seen by an OB. And he promptly apologized. I was so relieved to see this man and told me my pregnancy was definitely viable and that our baby was most certainly situated in my uterus. And so that was a huge relief to me in that moment, but it definitely didn't ease my concerns when it came to wondering if we would actually carry this baby to like full term. And I think it really, that experience on top of pregnancy loss really contributed to a difficulty in me being able to bond with our little baby for probably the first two thirds of this pregnancy. Whereas with my daughter, I was just enthralled from day one totally, utterly enthralled. I definitely had like morning sickness, but you know, we were commercial fishing for my first like trimester with her. So, you know, it was like, was it seasickness? Was it morning sickness? I didn't know, but I was just completely enthralled with her and here I'm pregnant and I was just more scared and just had a really hard time connecting in and make even bonding. And I know that's like really common, but Yeah, I think for those listening, if you've experienced something similar, like, I just know how easy it is for guilt to seep in and and to feel guilty. And like, I think it's all part of the process, which I'm going to get to, I guess, is talking about grace. Yeah, so that's definitely, well, one of the things that I've learned in this pregnancy versus with my daughter is just to like live and operate at greater levels of grace for myself. Because like, especially there's just so much out of my own control. So even if I do quote unquote, all the right things, right? Like I'm eating all the right things. I'm doing all the right things. There's still no guarantee that we won't lose this baby and pain and loss in our world. It's it's inevitable. So I, I think this pregnancy, something that's really different is I've really been learning to live from a place of grace for myself and also like needing to like learn and practice forgiveness of myself. I think that's just been really important part of both like my mental and emotional well-being this time around. So, you know, but at the same time, I have also spent a lot more time focusing on the things that I can control. So in some ways, I feel like I've been even more intentional than I was with my daughter around like things around nutrition, the toxins our family are exposed to or aren't exposed to, things like carving out more space for myself, just giving myself that space to process, to journal, to heal. Because, you know, entering this pregnancy, I had done a lot of like heart work and healing, but I think as like you go through your pregnancy, like it's not uncommon, at least in my own experience to have different waves where I'm like, yeah, like, okay, I'm starting to bond with my baby. Things feel really good. And then all of a sudden just, oh, I'm like really struggling or like I'm things come up, right. Where you're, you're really missing out and you, on the loss of that child and like grieving. And so, yeah. And I think or things will trigger it. Like the other day I was at a friend's party with her kiddos and, you know, someone asked me, they saw my daughter and like, obviously I have this big old belly and they asked, Oh, like that's the perfect age gap. She's going to be able to help, you know, was that intentional and just, wow. Like, I just think that's perfect. And I had no idea, like just how triggering that would be of actually in my head, I envisioned having kids closer together and we don't have kids closer together because we lost a child. And I, you know, in the moment was just like really polite about it. And like, she didn't mean anything by it, but I think it's the little things that like will trigger you. And I'm like, Ooh, yeah, I actually am missing out on that. Or like I had envisioned things differently. And so I think to be able to create that space for continual 
healing processing has just been so important and something obviously I didn't really need to do in my first pregnancy because I hadn't experienced that, but that has been a huge component of a difference in this pregnancy. And, you know, as talking about being even more intentional, maybe with the things that I have in control right before me, because there's a lot not in control, but I also, I'm just like learning to approach them from like a so much more of a place of grace and just knowing that like I can do certain things, but it's okay that it's all a process and in the way that I'm doing it. Yeah. And I actually talk about all the the things that I am currently doing foundationally, like the intentional, these are the things I can control. Like this is foundational for, for myself, for my little baby growing inside my womb. I talk about all of these and have put together really a proactive approach to pregnancy, really fertility, pregnancy, and postpartum recovery, all from a holistic perspective that actually walks with like a woman through each of those stages of motherhood. And so we've created that course. It's called the Nourished to Flourish course. We'll like link it up in the show notes below, but it's really a holistic, wholehearted approach to motherhood. And so go learn more about it. It's been a, a summary of not only my like training, you know, helping people with as a holistic health educator and nutritional therapist, but also like through not only my own journey into motherhood, but walking with so many other moms and friends. And so I've put pretty much everything there. And so there's just like a lot of heart and soul with it from a really grace-filled place. So I really, I think, have channeled that aspect of my learnings into that course. So anyways, moving on and thinking about additional differences, I also have just really prioritized support and getting extra support that I've needed. And so where previously I didn't really spend much time working with professionals to support me in between the birth of our daughter and like my current pregnancy. As soon as I found out I was pregnant, I pretty much immediately established care with a naturopathic doctor. I started to have extensive blood work done. I started care with a new chiropractor back here in Alaska. We moved back to Alaska from Nashville. And I guess you can say we really love adventure and travel. Yeah. And then I also have like been working with a pelvic floor physical therapist. And we've even connected with a postpartum doula who's going to help us in the early weeks after our son is born. And, you know, and just in that transition from one kid to two kiddos. And so, you know, and I actually, I even hired a girl to help with like some really nourishing postpartum meals that I'm really excited about. And so I just haven't been shy to ask for help. And I think having felt so isolated, so alone, maybe a probably because it was the pandemic, but be like walking through pregnancy loss and just having it as something people don't really know how to support you in it. We don't talk about it. And so, I mean, I think we're doing better, but I've just made sure that I prioritize that this time around. And I guess I've just been way more intentional. The other thing too, I think about when it comes to like my support team is I love working with a midwife. And this is one of the reasons I like really encourage women to work with a midwife is because the support you get, the consistency of care is unlike anything you will experience other. I guess I've never had a hospital birth, so I can't say that. But in my experience, you are able to touch bases with your midwife on a regular basis. And so in my case, being able to have that quick communication has been just such a gift to be able to like text Mary. Mary's our midwife. We actually have a podcast episode coming up with her, which I'm really excited about. But you know, I'll text her. I'm like, uh, okay, so I'm pretty sure this is normal, but you know, like I just experienced this and this. And, you know, I just given what's, you know, what happened before. Can you just give me some feedback? And it's been so great because I can get a quick response. And I think because I've been a little bit more hyper aware of like these normal things, like in this pregnancy, it's just been so reassuring. So like, she'll be like, uh, yeah, that's totally normal. Or, Hey, that's normal. It sounds really normal, but If you'd like for peace of mind, we can, you know, we can go for a test or you can go get an ultrasound or whatever. And like just having that extra reassurance, it's, I think it's really contributed to me having like lower stress levels in this pregnancy and given having the history of loss. And then I think another thing when I think about my support crew and really leaning into getting extra support is I've been really vocal with my husband about what I'm feeling and I'm experiencing. And, you know, I've even included my daughter into it. And so I don't burden her with like the heavy emotions maybe of everything. But I mean, we've definitely created space for the child that we lost. And, you know, we really sense that we have a little boy 
and we've named him. And so my daughter knows she has another little brother that like isn't with us right now. And one day we'll be reunited, but for right now we're not. And I think being able to just be so vocal with my husband and even like to create that space with my daughter has, instead of like trying to hide or like forget it ever happened. Like we've been able to like create space for him. And we even plan to celebrate him like our little one on an annual basis, like on the day he would have been due. And I think that's just been really helpful. And I think it's helped my husband to be more vocal with him because he didn't experience it. It wasn't his body. It's a whole nother thing when you have like life and death come through your your own body. And so, and he's just been a rock star to be there to hold my hand through like all the tears, all the fears. And and on that note of like a partner, I know oftentimes partners don't always know how to support, you know, a grieving mama and my friends over at Box for Loss, they created this incredible, they're just, first of all, they're an incredible group of women. And they've created a couple different things to really support women through pregnancy loss. And so they have a box that deals with both the like the physical and the emotional healing of miscarriage. And so it's really designed while a woman's like still bleeding. But they've also created this little recovery bag and it's really geared towards the the emotional support and like giving you some tools and some resources to like aid in your just emotional healing and like processing. And, you know, so why I mentioned them is they have included a letter to the partner and this really speaks to the partner and shares how they can come alongside their grieving partner through it. And so I just, it's so beautiful. And I think it's something that our partners don't always know how to support us and we don't always know how to communicate that. And I've found so much healing just in being able to share and there's nothing like he can do, but just my husband being present, listening has been, it's been very therapeutic for my soul. And so I've linked up the box for loss below because it's great whether you're, you have walked through pregnancy loss yourself, or you have a friend or a family member or a colleague, like it's so much more common than we know. And sometimes we just don't have the words, but to be able to share this, I think is like just a really beautiful way to say, Hey, I'm thinking of you. I care for you. And to also give tangible tools that can really support a woman in her healing process. Yeah. So I think moving on. So I have to say like thinking about my support network, I am more grateful than ever for like the village who's rallying behind me, behind us in the season. Like we really never were meant to do it alone. And I think that is something I have challenged myself in, in this season is to even ask for more help and more support and to not feel ashamed for it or that I'm any less than of a mom because I need help and support. And I think that's a really common lie our culture tells us and, or that we believe. And I think we put often like too many expectations on ourselves to be some superwoman, and that's just not really ideal. And so that is a huge difference. I say would be like the level of intentionality I've had around asking for help and like getting support. That's really just made a difference in this pregnancy for me. Something else that's been super surprising to me. And I like had no clue how, just how therapeutic it would be, but like breath work, like, and I know that sounds really simple or, you know, we've talked, people probably are really familiar with doing yoga or, you know, meditations and in breath work, I was actually really surprised because even though I knew a lot of the benefits of it and I had experienced it or done it in the past, I specifically fell in love with like diaphragmatic breathing exercises and like, and just also taking the time to focus strengthening my core and pelvic floor. And I think just having lost a baby, and honestly, I think I've heard stories, similar stories from my friends who've given birth via cesarean, or they've maybe had a traumatic birth that like focusing on the mind body connection has just been like, grounding. Like it's been really grounding for me. And I've, I know it's like for other women that it's been really grounding for them, especially going through trauma. And I think there's often this like disconnect between the two. And so I think similarly to feeling just like not being able to bond as much with our little one, this pregnancy, as I like really began to focus on reestablishing that mind body connection, it helped to, it helped me actually bond with my little one. And so I've actually just so craved this time. And like, it's been something that is so surprising. I'm like the two things I've craved this, well, the three things I've craved this pregnancy, like citrus fruits, like nobody's business, my green juice in the morning. Like I I drink, I like organify greens in the morning, which I promise is not as disgusting as it sounds. 
and I like truly crave it. It's the first thing I do getting, getting up in the morning. I have like 32 ounces of water with that in it. And then I've craved creating space for just breath work. And usually when I like create that space for breath work, I am also like creating a meditative space. And I usually use that time to focus on some sort of literature or some words of Jesus, something that's just edifying and encouraging and empowering. And that has just been so surprising at how healing and grounding it's been. So that's definitely been something that's been a game changer for me. And I specifically love Studio Bloom. They have this whole series of like bloom on the go. Like there are these meditations and breathing exercises and they have a ton of other exercises and I'm not affiliated with them in any way. I just absolutely thank you to probably their ad marketing and being pregnant, found them and finally was like, I'm going to check them out. And I just have so, so loved their workouts. They have a whole birth prep workout section, but they have this whole, like really spend a lot of time focusing on that mind body connection through diaphragmatic breathing. And specifically like these bloom on the go sessions are just, they're probably 10 to 20 minutes and they're just really awesome. And so that's been really grounding. And then lastly, like, and I guess we've already kind of shared this, but in this pregnancy, I've really just had to create the space to feel all the feels. And like, even now to be totally vulnerable, you know, the closer I get to my due date, I'm so thrilled to meet our son, but I'm also have been hyper, hyper aware of the baby I don't have in my arms. And I've had to hold space for those feelings. And I've had to give myself even more grace. It's just something this morning I like, was tearing up over. And so I'm sure more feelings are going to come too, because healing, it's not linear and grief shows up in all like unexpected places. And so, you know, on one hand, I am extremely thrilled. And on the other hand, I am just in a whole new wave mourning the child like we don't have. Yeah. So that's like where I find myself today. And like this pregnancy has been again, like overall, like I really love being pregnant. I in many ways, it's been very smooth. I definitely have like a lot more pelvic pain this time and like have had to do things a little bit differently. But you know, it doesn't mean it's like, a, though it's smooth, it doesn't mean that it's like not a bumpy road at the same time or filled with grief or fear or pain. And so I've had my like, I've felt like I've had to rise up with courage in different places. And also, go down to deeper places of just giving myself space to grow, to heal, and to create grace or to receive grace, really. I've had to receive a lot of grace because a lot of healing, I think, is beyond myself. And I've had to really lean into my higher power to like find the strength, honestly. And I think that's so true of a lot of aspects of motherhood. It is thrilling and exciting, and it also requires everything of you and more. And like, I don't have that more. And so I've really had to like lean on my higher power in in many ways every day. So yeah. So I mean, I think that's really to answer that question fully took a little bit of time, but there's been a lot of things that have been different between all my different pregnancies and, you know, especially pregnancy after loss has been really unique. And so I know I'm just one story and the way other women experience it is like completely different, but I feel honored to be able to just like to share this with you guys and hope that maybe there's been some encouraging nuggets with you. Yeah. So we're 37 weeks. And so I just feel so fortunate to like have made it almost full term with this little one and we will be having a home birth. That is the plan. Our midwife is dropping off the birth pool today. So we are ready. I am so thrilled and that'll be a conversation for another day though. And I really look forward to sharing our birth story later this fall with you. But you know, just a couple of things like parting thoughts before I end today's conversation, like is motherhood truly is like, it's the biggest blessing and it is worth every single sleepless night, every tear shed and like every challenge along the way. I in one of the upcoming Voices of Motherhood episodes that I'm so excited to share. These conversations have just been oh, so precious to me. And one of them, the mama, she shares that like if she could go back to the beginning um, and she's walked quite the road into motherhood, not an easy journey. And she was her advice to herself at the beginning would be like, just wait for it. Like, you don't know how good life is going to be. You don't know like how good it's going to get and how fun it can be. And I just loved that because I feel like, especially after walking through 
pregnancy loss, or if you've received, you know, like a diagnosis while pregnant or after pregnancy, or there's always, always hope on the other side. And being a mom is just full of so many incredible moments and so much joy. And, um, and it's just like, such a such a gift and i find like the more i can let go of my own unrealistic expectations of like myself especially and the more i can sink into that like place that sea of grace the more present i get to be with my daughter the more i enjoy motherhood and it truly is like so awesome and so i i just want to encourage you like if you're in a dark season in a dark space there's, there's beauty ahead of you. There's so much goodness ahead of you, even if that it doesn't feel like that, because I know what it's like to, to feel so isolated and like you're in the pit, <laughs> you're in the absolute pit and you're like stuck and, um, but it, you don't have to stay there and you won't stay there. And so anyways, I know this episode probably was a bit weighty, pregnancy loss and pregnancy after loss. It's a heavy topic, but you know, my real hope is that you have permission to heal, to give yourself grace and, and just that you know, you're not alone in your own journey. And so if you need any encouragement, if you need any further support, please reach out to us. We are here to walk with you. And so you can reach us at hello at nourishedmotherhood.com or go to our website and fill out the contact form. And we want to walk with you in this journey. And You know, I really want to invite you and and actually encourage you to keep listening to this podcast because we have a whole series I mentioned before, like the voices of motherhood. And these are stories of other moms and women just like you. And they're stories of laughter and beauty. It's hardship, pain, resilience, courage, hope, and healing. And like, I just, again, the women I have had the privilege to talk to, man, they've walked through some tough stuff and man, are women awesome. I just like love y'all and they're really powerful stories. So I don't want you to miss them. In fact, the next episode will actually kick off our Voices of Motherhood series. And so I just really can't wait to share that with you. So please tune into those and also know we have several guest experts who will be sharing their knowledge and experience with you as well to support you on your journey. So just remember... I'm so grateful for you. Like, this is just the beginning, and we're here to walk with you along the way. Motherhood truly is a journey of becoming, and it's it's a journey of, it's a wild adventure <laughs> full of the bumpy and the smooth paths. And, you know, I just, my desire is to see every single woman supported in in this journey. So that's all for now, and I will catch you in the next episode of the Nourished Motherhood podcast. I hope you love this episode of the Nourished Motherhood podcast. If you want to stay in touch and up to date with all the happenings over at the Nourished Motherhood Collective, make sure you're a part of our email community. Head on over to our website at nourishedmotherhood.com or click the link in our show notes to get on the list.